Okay, hello everyone. It's thrilled to have you all for another session of the Glamcon seminars. Today we have Dr. Cynthia Nast, and <clears throat> who is a professor of pathology at Cedar Sinai Medical Center and the David Gaffman School of Medicine at UCLA. As we discussed in the very intro, um, I'm in the process of obtaining a new electron microscope, and uh, you know it, it's uh, always uh, great to kind of like get. Um, you know, excited with uh, new inputs from particularly um, expert in the field. So, okay, well, thank you very much for that kind introduction and the opportunity to share with everybody today the importance of electron microscopy in kidney biopsy pathology. And it's important for diagnosis and prognosis, not only for fun to see tubular reticular inclusion fish and a zebra made out of zebra bodies. So EM can provide a number of contributions to renal pathology. Diagnostically, in a variety of studies in different parts of the world, it's been shown to be significant and up to 80, uh, to provide significant information in up to 86% of native kidney biopsies and essential in up to 40%. In pediatric biopsies, it's even more important being essential or very important for appropriate diagnosis in 65% and confirmatory in 32%. So really in, in greater than 95% of pediatric kidney biopsies, EM provides uh, very useful or, or necessary information. And it's also been shown that EM findings may change the interpretation of light and or immunofluorescence in up to 10% of native kidney biopsies. Prognostically, there are novel EM uh, features that are not typically used for diagnosis, but may help predict remission of proteinuria or progression of renal disease. And also EM features may potentially identify treatment targets in uh, particularly proteinuric glomerular diseases. So what are the EM contributions? Uh, it may be essential for primary diagnosis. EM may provide information that's essential for significant secondary diagnosis, and I'll give examples of this as we go through the talk. May contribute additional clinically relevant diagnostic information. It may resolve a differential diagnosis, and I'll give a few examples of this. Or may confirm a diagnosis that is preliminarily uh, made by light and immunofluorescence. And here's an example. This is from an article in glomerular diseases, which is a new journal I'll be telling you about a little bit at the end of the talk. This is from an article on uh, lupus nephritis and EM, as you can see from this table pulled from this article, may uh, confirm a diagnosis of lupus or help with accurate assessment of the class of lupus nephritis, can identify additional classes or differentiate between lupus and non-lupus membranous, um, can provide the status of the extent of glomerular deposits, providing potentially prognostic information and other things. I won't bore you with reading the whole table, but you get the idea that EM really can provide information that is important in addition to light and IF. So we're going to be going through and looking at EM in native kidney biopsies, looking at glomerular cell structural changes the morphology of basement membranes in both glomeruli and tubules, deposits or infiltrating material location, substructure, and characteristics, and intracellular inclusions or other intracellular abnormalities. And I'll also be talking about this briefly in the setting of transplants. And of course, this requires not only correlation with light microscopy and immunofluorescence finding, but as with all renal pathology, always requires correlation with the clinical picture. So looking at podocyte structural changes, foot process effacement, uh, of course, is necessary for a diagnosis of minimal change disease and early recurrent FSGS in transplants, as well as lupus podocytopathy. And the extent of foot process effacement may relate to the pathogenesis of FSGS, uh, primary FSGS, or some forms of secondary genetic type of FSGS, particularly in genes that um, code for proteins in the slit diaphragm. 
there may be detachment of foot processes from the basement membrane with laying down of new loose matrix, or excuse me, a basement membrane material forming hay a picture of this. And this is suggestive of FSGS in the EM if it hasn't been um, identified by light or IF or the thick section. And it's very important that this is not confused with layering of the glomerular basement membrane, which I believe.